As far as the chaos we find ourselves in these days, it's difficult to say which side pulled the trigger first. Arugia deployed an automatic intercept system with drones. Osea implemented long-range attacks to bypass them. So Arugia decided to sabotage Osea's communications and navigation technology. Arugia couldn't launch a satellite themselves, but they were still able to hack the software of the Osean transmission and navigation systems. Before Osea even noticed, half of their satellites were hijacked. That's when things got ugly. In an attempt to knock out each other's capabilities, both forces launched fighters loaded with anti-satellite missiles at the same time. Only military satellites were targeted. However, their destruction created a debris field in orbit which wiped out scores of other satellites, both private and government-owned. What kept the world relatively sane up to that point had been free-flowing data and information. But now, those were gone. All that remained was chaos and confusion. Government and civilian broadcasts and transmissions were cut off. The flow of information had ceased. Forces on both sides of the conflict now found themselves unable to communicate with their superiors. Many of the smaller countries annexed by Arugia and yearning for their independence seized the opportunity and started their own uprisings. As for why some of Osea's military decided to break off from the main force and continue on their own, I have no idea. Perhaps there was some sort of dispute over the chain of command. The continent that had once seen wars that were only fought between Osea and Rugia was now full of numerous conflicts between rival leaders vying for power. Insurgencies were everywhere. I even heard a rumor that a group of Osean convicts had rebelled. Rumors. It never ceased to amaze me that even at a crazy time like this, something as trivial as a rumor could find its way here. Communications from corporate were cut off. Apparently, the entire computer network was down. It was a wise decision to make our drones autonomous with AI instead of being radio controlled. Wise and forward thinking. Even with their GPS offline, they can still use their sensors to navigate as long as they're working properly. I'm sure the drones are still working perfectly, following their mission orders to the letter. I wish I could upload Mihai's new data to them, but without a connection, I can't upload the software to the active drones. The new ones we're making, though, there should still be enough time to upgrade those before they're activated. I'll be taking the data I've acquired away from the front lines now. Oh, and I'll be taking the girls too. I told my assistant Masa it was time to get Mihai's granddaughters ready to leave here. She's not much older than the girls, but she has a way about her, and I'm sure she won't have any trouble with them. I saw a plane flying off in the distance. I imagine it was looking for a safer place. The plane had a rose emblem on it. Arusia's communication networks have been down since their satellites were destroyed. Unfortunately, we are experiencing trouble too. All of Yuzia has been affected, and we don't know when things will be back up and running. We're not even sure if this is Arugia's doing. Still, we will follow the strategy that was originally planned, and move on to the next operation after liberating Farbanti. Let's get to it. Since the war began, we've been receiving communications in secret from an officer in the Arugian army. With the capital under our control, Arugia's radical element is losing support quickly, affecting the balance of power. HQ is thinking of using the military officer as a way to gain leverage to settle peace negotiations. The officer is currently hiding in the outskirts of Anchorhead Bay, having joined up with support dispatch from the Ocean Army. The plan is that they'll take a standard vehicle to a rendezvous point at a harbor in the east part of the city, where a helicopter will be waiting. 
I would like the new Strider Squadron to provide escort for the officer. Cyclops will remain at the base on standby to serve as defense. With the communication network currently down in the capital, I very much doubt Arusia will be able to mount a regimented counterattack. However, it is likely that Arusia's intelligence department and the remaining forces who are aware of the officer's movements will interfere. Keep a close eye on the officer and make sure he stays safe. Our victory in Farbanti has given us a golden opportunity to finally end this war. Be safe out there. Take note that our satellite-based IFF has become unreliable following the recent communications failure. As such, target ID will be done by processing the images from the infrared cameras on your aircraft. Objects will initially appear as unknown on your HUDs, but will be ID'd once you close in on them for a set period of time. Strider Squadron, you're cleared to taxi. To the unidentified Ocean craft, this is Captain Carl of the Ocean Army. Are you here for the escort? You're not the squadron I was expecting. Are you really friendlies? Over. This is Longcaster, airborne warning and control system for the Ocean Long Range Strategic Strike Group. Captain Carl, they're on our side. And those two pilots we've heard about must be here too. Okay, I hope you're right. Longcaster, are all of these really unknowns? It's a state of civil war. The Erujian army is fighting itself. There's no guarantee the Oceans won't shoot us in this confusion. We'll image process the unknowns caught in your camps to identify friend or foe. The process will be faster if you get a close-up, well-centered image. Meanwhile, we just run if they shoot us, right? Affirmative. Always identify your target before you fire. War is something I'll never get used to. But tonight has been a total shock. A city under martial law. Gunfire and the roar of jets echoing through the streets. Give me Strider Squadron's IDs. Oh, and uh, hand me that sandwich.
spiked. Nice work. That takes care of that one. We're heading for the highway. Thanks to you, we got out of paying that one. Responsible for Harley's a 
assassination. You talking politics? That's new. Can't ignore a story like that, right, Trigger? We have no choice! Fire! Bad news. Hostile armored forces outside of the tunnel. I'm not thinking who should go say hi. Still air 
aircraft eliminated. The liaison is safe. Wait. The escort fighter is... in drive. They're missing the drive. What the hell? You gotta be kidding me. Liaison escort has a radar lock. They're targeting you guys. What the hell? We were just helping them. Arusian aircraft. This is AWACS Moncaster. Do not engage the liaison. Break off now. Can you hear me on this channel, Bus Aircraft? Those escort aircraft are drones. They are currently being operated autonomously. They are not being controlled by anyone. They are flying on their own volition. What? In that case, we have no choice but to shoot the aircraft down. Unfortunately, yes. We did what we could. Weapons free. We're cleared to attack the escort. Welcome. Understood. Welcome. They're in my way! Side Anchorhead Bay. All aircraft, RTB, mission complete. All hostiles, huh? In order to respond to the attack on the base, Cyclops has scrambled after being on standby. We'll head up too, once our planes are ready. Oh, and Labarth is dead. What did you say? Apparently, he was shot down by another Ocean aircraft after he left the area of operations. I mean, I know it was chaos, but still. At any rate, the sealed order operation has come to a close. We have no idea about a plan for going forward. All we can do for now is watch our own backs. What's up with the commander? He's staying in his room. He's still alive, since we can hear him crying.
the island we went to was supposed to have been secured by the ground forces. They hadn't gotten a handle on things by the time we got there, so now we were stuck in the middle of a half-assed campaign. My job was to get the planes ready for combat, making repairs and handing them over to our troop of cons. Thing is, the enemy still had the hangars. The comms were still down, so none of us knew what the hell was going on. The last transmission I heard before everything went to shit was that some prisoners from an Ocean military penal unit rioted and managed to escape. They stole some jets and now they were flying around, taking out their former allies left and right. I wonder if any units like ours were out here, creeping around. Hearing the Ocean jets firing at each other overhead chipped away at morale. Since the radio was out, it was quiet. I liked it better that way. All I heard was the gunfire. Here we were, walking around carrying rifles. We were pilots, damn it. Friendly fire will probably kill us. You know things are desperate when the guards that used to lock us into solitary are now telling us it's better we all stick together. I guess they think our odds of surviving this war are better that way. After walking for miles across the battlefield, we came across the wreckage of a plane. Passenger, not military. I knew that rose. It was an erosion liaison plane. The guard's dogs smelled something and took off. They led us to a cliff. And the bodies. Today, I lost everything. When Osea attacked our capital, my father, a man who was never really suited to being the king, was killed. I was to be flown out of the war zone to safety, but the plane was shot down by rebels. The entire crew was killed in the crash. Soldiers appeared and one shot at me. My dog went after him and shot him to pieces. He was my best friend. After all those speeches I gave, about working together for peace. I thought everyone felt the same as I did. <gasps> I'm sure the soldier who shot at me knew I was the princess of Arugia. He was Arugian too. More soldiers have come. Now, there is no one left to protect me. I am so numb, I cannot move. Watch as one of their dogs approaches and sniffs mournfully at my dead friend. I wonder if it grieves for him as much as I do. I can barely think. I feel weaker by the minute. I don't know who these soldiers are with, but I managed to take a sip of the water they gave me. How long have you been here? Somehow, I muster the courage to answer the woman's question. I tell her I've been there three days. They gather around me with grim looks on their faces. What would they do if they knew I was the Erosion Princess? After searching the cockpit of the plane, the woman who spoke to me before came back to me. This is an air-to-ground tactical radio. It still works! I noticed she walked with a limp. She knelt down next to me and asked her companions to give me some food. And then, very softly, she said, You see, I used to listen to your broadcasts, your royal highness. Just what did you see here? Okay, enough talk. Your opinions have all been taken into consideration. Beyond the seizure of Forbanti, which is important, and supporting the Erusian officer. At this point, I just don't know what our strategy is, or what our mission will be. Radio communication is still patchy for both the military and civilians. 
so we're getting zip from mission command about our orders. Still, with countless erosion forces in the area, it's too dangerous for us to stay around here waiting for a miracle. Now, regarding Count's suggestion to think about self-defense, uh, I think we should make a break for Tyler Island. It was a large Ocean base before the start of the war. Count says his previous squadron took part in an operation to seize control of the island. It has the only base that will get us to the space elevator without refueling. It's also a transport facility for supply ships that provide drones and ammo for arsenal birds. For the Ocean forces that are looking to reclaim the space elevator, those are two great reasons in its favor. If everything went according to plan, the base may already be in allied hands when we get there. Though based on what Count told me about the island operation, it won't be easy to seize control. If the ground troops have managed to open the bridgehead, the transport route to Osea for supply ships should be available. So much at stake, I can't imagine Arusia just giving it up without a fight. Things could really have gone bad. Even if there are enemies left, they should be pretty easy to suppress. I just want to go home, man. Me too. With that look on your face, Trigger, I know exactly what you want to do. If Trigger's ready to kick ass, then so am I. Damn straight. We're with you, Trigger. It's decided then. Let's get all the aircraft and haul ass to Tyler Island. Although we can avoid the Arsenal Bird's anti-air network, there's still remnants from the Erusion forces. I want to get to the island without getting into any unnecessary combat. Pick a fast craft and fix it how you want. Pack for a long trip, but remember, if you drag your ass, you'll get left behind. Squadron, sorties. This is Tango 23, pursued by multiple tanks and APCs. They'll all go down if we don't pull back the landing craft. If what? Abandoned Tango 23? <sighs> Something's not right. Tango 23, we don't have the firepower to assist you. You're on your own. Please, we need help. Wagtail is on the Ocean landing ship. What's going on? What did you say? Multiple Vokies inbound. Damn it. Prepare for anti air combat. This is the AWACS Longcaster. The aircraft in your area belong to the LRSSG. Now, light aircraft. A retreating vehicle is taking fire. Requesting assistance. Roger. ID complete. Their artillery fire just missed us off our starboard side. Unknown successfully identified. Target acquired. Shit. Right away. Update on Tyler Island. Couldn't be worse. Our forces are scattered and on the run. You're on the run? We're oh, waiting for retreating units here to carry them out to safety. Many of our allies are cut off. We need support and an escape route. Understood. We'll do what we can. Let's help retreating Ocean forces. Take out any hostiles in their area. Don't engage till targets are ID'd. The boots on the ground don't need more people shooting at them. Thanks. It's absolute chaos out there. The erosions are even starting to fight amongst themselves. Well, now we know what's going on, but shit. You're rolling friendly birds! We got the hostiles in our area! Get us out of this hellhole! We need help on with Philip and Rudy! If you see three strikes, count the three, and the enemy's gone. Our last vehicle has been destroyed! Let's get out of here! It's a big man! Let's get rolling! Hit the gas and don't let up until we reach the extraction point! I don't want to see anyone! Hostile or friendly! There's more over here. The bodies are dead civilians. I don't think they were part of the fight. Combat, they're all lined up. No, they're not combatants. Some of them aren't even wearing shoes. I just had the photograph. We'll get that game. Let's get out of here. Give us another 30 minutes. The men say they want to at least get some children. Fire with their own. I can guess what happened. Crazy people. Don't pursue 
Operation Phoenix Diamond. Let's try to pull them away from that driver. Our guys just got the enemy near support. What do we do now? Send in the tank! Allied retreat looks good. Trigger has destroyed the target. I count 12 dead bodies. Launched. They seem to be upper middle class. Spaceport's nearby, so they could be researched for the family. Out of 
time. The rest is up to you. I'm out. Locked on bandit. ships have been launched from the mass driver. If the supply ships make it to the arsenal bird, they'll be able to resupply it. They may be loaded with new weaponry that we don't even know about. We have no choice but to take down the supply ships before they can get within the arsenal bird's air defense network. You've got to hurry or you're not going to make it. Three minutes to the enemy's air defense network. So they're trying to feed that giant monster of a bird. We can't let them complete their mission. Missile. All aircraft, remain on high alert. Missile. We got bandits incoming on radar. Missile. You're gonna have to forget Missile. about them for now. Focus Missile. on destroying that supply ship first. Missile. We're sitting ducks like this. Missile. Let the supply ship get too far away, we'll never be able to catch it. That sucker's hiding in the clouds. Trigger, don't let it get away. Did you see that 
explosion? Looks like that's one of them down. Remember, there are two supply ships out there. Hurry up and shoot the other one down. We've recalculated the remaining time. Hope you all enjoyed the pretty fireworks. This thing had the windows, we could have seen it for ourselves. Nice work, team. Good. Take a seat. Everyone's here. All right. Good work in sinking the supply ships. Not to mention saving the refugees. However, we're in no position to start celebrating. Even the commander here is starting to fray from the stress. Can't say I blame him. Now, Tyler Island is in a state of complete anarchy. This base isn't safe either. The faces you see around you are the only friends we've got. Take a good look. We found a boat then sailed away from the island. We had to. We didn't belong there. The new guy's name was George. I noticed when the anarchist said his name, he said it with a thick Belkan accent. How did you know that he was from Belka? Well, both my parents were from Belka, so... You never told me that. They say that Belkans are known for their conspiracies. That's just a stereotype. Now, I simply stated my honest opinion and was thrown in jail for it. The princess sat there looking miserable. That was a dumbass stunt she pulled back there, but it got us on this boat. Take a look at that. This ship is heading for a single rope that's hanging down from the sky. Do you know how far the end of that rope reaches? Outer space. No. It is a direct connection to the very potential of mankind itself. Or at least it was until war erupted. It's my strong belief that the rope might be connected to a very distant, faraway source of, of great conflict and strife. Even long before the war, the whole world started falling apart once Harling began trying to build it. I often wonder, what was going through Harling's mind when, when he was trying to destroy the very thing that so many people were sacrificed in order to create. Sacrificed? What do you mean? Have you seen all of those countless old space shuttles on Tyler Island that are no longer in use? Yeah. <laughs> I always thought of them as a good source of scrap. They're an obsolete technology that was abandoned during the construction of the space elevator. Which would mean that if the space elevator was destroyed, it would be that much harder for mankind to reach the stars, until we find another way. But even then, 
Harling still went ahead and tried to destroy it. At the cost of his own life. That's not the way I heard it. What I heard was that he sacrificed himself to protect the tower from an incoming missile. Oh, I was told he tried to fly his ship into the tower in order to destroy it. I wonder which story is true, your royal highness. I don't know. Looking at it objectively, it's reasonable to believe that Harling had both options before him. When it comes to which one you think he took, I guess it's like a mirror. Yes, it is. It's like a mirror looking into your own soul, based on whichever choice you believe it was. At the moment, though, I can only see darkness. I think... I think that thing should be destroyed. It's time for the briefing. Although, since we don't have any contact with HQ, it's not like this is an official mission. Anyway, it looks like the seizure of Tyler Island and the relief from Osea have been postponed. In the meantime, we just have to do what we can to survive. Since losing its capital city of Ferbanti, Eurusian forces have separated into smaller, autonomous factions. It looks like Eruja's largest force and leading faction will pass through the area around this base. The space elevator is significant to them, so they're probably heading there. Should we intercept? Why? I doubt they're going to start a fight now. Our top priority should be to get home. Let's go already. Yeah. It's not like we have the supplies, power, or even a real reason to put up a fight. But, what are we going to do if they bring the fight to us? We need to be ready to push them back. If we head inland from here towards Arusha, there's an old castle that's been converted into a stockpiling base. Shalaji Castle. It's currently occupied by some of the Arusian forces that broke off, but we need ammo and fuel. They appear to have converted a freeway into a runway so we can expect them to have the capacity for air combat. But they'll be easier to handle than Arusha's lead faction. But we can't use all our aircraft to attack. The transport carrying the stolen supplies needs support. Okay, Strider Squadron. You head out first, and neuter the dogs at the stockpiling base. Rendezvous with Cyclops Squadron, who will bring the transport. Then we bring the supplies back to this base. Aircraft are our only threat. Sounds good. We'll make it. We're all gonna fly home. Together. Strider Squadron, aircraft prep complete. You're cleared to taxi. forces are in the region ahead. No allies here. No need to ID your target. We've set a number of priority targets, focusing on their anti-aircraft weaponry. Okay, team. Get to work. Entering cloud cover. Unidentified aircraft. Not sure if friend or foe. Fire anyway. We don't have time to be wondering if they're friendlies or not. So, we capture this base and take the fuel and supplies. That's the plan, right, Trigger? You take if you want to live. That's how it was where I grew up. I was just double-checking mission orders, Hoosian. Our anti-air guns are destroyed. Abandon and fall back to our rear position. Retreat! There are more vehicles along the road. They don't appear to be military. They're Arusian refugees. They must be fleeing since the conflict got worse. Unidentified aircraft. 
Identify at once or we'll open fire. What are they talking about? They already are firing on us. The enemy's confused. I know. Help us here. No, we're with the Ocean Army. So what's this faction split from the Arushan military? The autonomous state of Shalaji used to be a nation. The region has always leaned towards independence. Those who want to restore their homelands flock to it. Apparently, their core consists of officers from Boslej, which neighbor Shalaji. Are they our enemies? They're our enemy's enemy, but not our friends. Strike room. Land immediately and hand 
over your planes and base to us. Ah, you must be the snowbirds. It's absurd for you to talk in so tough after losing one of the leaders at Fabanti. You bastard! You defile this country. As long as you are here, this country will never know peace. Shit, damn. We can't even last long enough to buy ourselves some time. The resupply went well. We should be okay on food and fuel reserves for a little while at least. 
Luckily, the rumor that the Erujian army is advancing nearby is only a rumor. There's no sign of them from the skies. Rumors, rumors, rumors. This is what happens when you lose communications. But we got one good fact. The plane trigger shot down was an advanced model of the XO2 Wyvern. It was developed in the last Continental War. Erujia had a lot up their sleeves. Apparently, they were even supposed to have Belkin aircraft back in the first war. What if Trigger couldn't shoot it down? Just thinking about it gives me chills. We're lucky to be here. In war, you never know what's lurking behind the curtains. But it looks like everything's loose now. Solid chain of command, rest periods after sorties, a battlefield where you know friend from foe. All of that's gone now, lost in a fog of confusion feels like a distant dream. Now, just how the hell are we gonna get out of this mess?